Hello. So today um, I'd like to go through another another um, test driven development session and I found this kata, this Mars rover kata, um, where yeah uh, you have to implement a Mars rover and I'd like to go through the rules here. Uh, let me read them or actually I have I have copied them over here in, into the uh, IntelliJ IDE. So your task is uh, you're part of a team that, ex that explores Mars by sending remotely controlled vehicles to the surface of the planet. Uh, develop an API that translates the commands sent from Earth to instructions that are understood by the rover. And the requirements are you are given the initial starting point x, y of a rover and the direction north, south, east, west it is facing. Uh, the rover receives a character array of commands. Implement commands that move the rover forward, backward. Implement commands that turn the rover left, right. Implement wrapping from one edge of the grid to another. Planets are, are spheres after all. Implement obstacle detection before each move to a new square. If a given sequence of commands encounters an obstacle, the rover moves up to the last possible point, aborts the sequence and reports the obstacle. Okay, so those are our rules. This is basically the uh, what we have to implement. And I'd like to do this, uh, as I said, in a test-driven uh, test driven using Scala. Um, we are also doing the outside-in approach, okay, uh, in a in a classic or a classicist test-driven development. Um, yeah, so um, I have prepared two things. We basically need only two things because uh, uh, we start with the right with the uh, outside in with the interface to the rover. Okay, so I have a, a test class rover should, and we're using uh, the Scala test framework with a word spec like um, test syntax and on the other hand I have the implementation. So let's get started. The first thing we have to do is this. I think we go through this step by step and implement each point here uh, okay, until the end. You are given the initial starting point x, y of a rover and the direction north, south, east, west it is facing. So we have to create. We have to create a rover class, and I would like to use to uh, say rover should initialize with um, with starting point and. Uh, heading. Okay, so I'd like to say uh, rover, new rover, and then um, yeah, we have x, y, so we could use, we could use a, a tuple, a tuple of coordinates, and I'd like to start at 1, 1, and the facing is n, like north, okay? So this certainly doesn't compile, so I have to move over here. And um, yeah, basically we have two options here. We can either initialize the stuff uh, on the constructor, which I kind of prefer, uh, we could also use an empty constructor and um, call some initialize method on, on, on the rover. But um, I want to enforce actually that, uh, that we have to pass this in, right? That the rover is really initialized. And, and so I prefer to do that uh, with a constructor. Okay, so, okay, so we have start Ding. Mm. Coordinates. Coordinates. It's a tuple of int. Int. 
Okay, and then we have the starting start heading, which is uh, a um, a character character. Okay, and this is not a character, so we have to make this a character. Uh, Yeah, and that's pretty much it for now. Okay, so we run the test, run this test class. Um, on Mac, the shortcut for running uh, for, for, for running the test, or depending on the context where you are. Okay, so I click the I click the cursor, I put the cursor here, outside inside of the uh, test class, but outside of the test method. And when I click, when I when I um, press Shift Control R then uh, IntelliJ will run uh, the test class when I would put um, my cursor in in the test method and I press um, shift control R it will only run the test method okay and uh, only using control R will run the last thing it has run okay so it remembers what it has last run and it will uh, run it again Okay, so, but, um, yeah, we have uh, the rover now. So the rover initializes. We can't actually, um, we can't actually co verify, uh, we can't actually ver verify the starting points except that we add some getters or something or that we, yeah, that may be something we could do. So the rover... And then we assert that um, that rover dot get uh, chords equals one one. Okay, so that's something we could actually do. Yes, uh, assert rover dot get heading equals north. Okay, so we have some getters here uh, that with whose we can uh, we can uh, verify the current coordinates and the current heading equals. So what do I return here? Um, I don't want to. I return the starting chords for now. This is not right, but I want to implement this as quickly as possible. Get heading due to uh, due to the test-driven development classicist, right? Heading, and then we can check whether this passes, and it passes. And now we can we can refactor this. Okay, so we have a private uh, we have a private Bar chords int equals and we put the start coordinates here. Okay, private var heading, which is a character equals start heading. Yes, and here we return our state of the rover so basically this is the state of the rover okay um, let's run the test again and see if it still passes and if it does we can move on okay so so we got uh, so we got okay so we've worked on this okay and we set it okay this is done uh, now this one the rover receives a character array of commands Good. Uh, rover should receive commands. Should not only receive, but I want it to execute commands. Okay. Receive and execute. Okay. Receive and execute commands. 
but it's empty. I don't want to, um, I just want to carve out the, the interface here a little bit and we just send an empty, uh, empty, we just send empty commands, okay? Array of commands. It, it doesn't specify here that I have to send something and I just want to carve out the, the interface and so that's what we do. So we need another rover. Rover equals rover and um, yeah, I can copy this from here. And we need a new rover. And then I want the rover and uh, I want to return something. So I want to have a result. So we send the rover. We want the rover to execute some commands. And those commands are an array of characters and as the result I want that the rover so what do we do here We could either query, um, so when the rover executes commands, okay, uh, it probably changes the coordinates and it changes the heading because we sent left, right, we sent forward, backward. So it will change the coordinates and it will, and it will change the heading. And effectively, we don't need the execute commands function to return something. We could return the coordinates and the current heading But actually, I think I would prefer here that the rover, that I use the, that I need, that I get the state of the rover and control and, and uh, control the state. So the state here should still be this. Okay, so this is still this should still be the state after I send the execute command. So we have now to implement. Uh, we have now to imp implement. Or let me one second because I don't know those. I don't need those getters, right? So I don't need those getters. Okay, no, I don't. So Scala will automatically add getters. Here we don't need those getters, okay? So I just say uh, chords heading chords heading, and so that I actually have only one one interface, one um, yeah one method interface to this rover and this is the execute commands okay so execute commands then my commands are an array of characters and uh, I want it for now to return nothing because we query the coordinates using the state yeah, and that's it. So, so actually, we, yeah, we can do that because there is no state at the moment. And we can run the test and see if, if it passes. Yes, it passes. Um, so, but um, I'd like to do some, yeah, okay, not yet. I'd like to actually do something else because I don't like, uh, um, I don't like how we store the heading as a character, okay? I don't want to store this as a character, actually. So I want a, a, I want a type, I want a case class uh, called 
heading, which here takes uh, the value in form of a character, okay? And then um, we define we define a few headings for at the moment we only have north north mm -hmm. equals heading n yes and then I would want this heading here to also be my case class heading okay and um, and yeah yes okay that's that's pretty nice so we put in a character for the heading as initialization and but internally we store the heading as as a type so that we here can can say this should be north okay and here this should also be north yeah. So we have to import import heading so that Scala knows the classes. Let me run this again. So this was a refactoring I uh, wanted to do, and the test should still pass. Okay. So the next thing we do. So that this was it for for the character for the receives a character array. So Rover can now receive a character array. We have carved out the, the interface. Uh, implement commands that move the rover forward and backward. Okay, so that's what we do. The rover should move forward, backward. Okay, so okay, so we need again. Now I create again a rover, um, so we can actually move this to uh, um, we can move this the rover initialization to the uh, to before before each basically right so that before each test. I have a rover um, bar rover rover and we initialize it empty but in before um, we create our rover okay so this should still be passing Okay. Um, good. So, the move. Now we have a rover already, and we can now send it a. We can now execute command, ex execute commands, and send it a forward command. So it should move forward. Okay. When I move it forward. Um, the coordinates should change uh, and they should change to when I move it to the heading is north and when I move forward with a heading of north uh, I have to increase the the absolute the, the, the y coordinate okay so we have to have two here All right and let me copy this the heading should not change heading should not change. Let's run this and it will certainly fail because we don't don't actually um, process any commands yet. So let's see how we can implement this. We can implement this very quickly by well I could change the coordinates to 1, 2, okay, and uh, this could actually pass, but I think the previous, yeah, so the previous test will fail with this, okay, so we have to implement 
we have to implement a little bit more logic here. So we have commands, okay? And we have commands. So I want to loop over over the commands. I want to loop over the commands. So this is a closure. I want to loop over the commands and see when uh, I have a case of F. Then I want to move the rover. Uh, let me check this here. Command match. Okay, so we have to do it like So when we um, when we receive a command for moving forward, we have to move. And again here, I don't want to send the move. So the move should be a real function, okay? So I want to pass something in. I want to pass in the current coordinates and I want to pass in uh, the the direction in which or if it's if it's forward or backward uh, and I want to pass in a type I don't want to pass in the character so we have to make a uh, we have to make a character to type uh, conversion here and I want to move in the coordinates the current coordinates to this move function okay um, so we need to have another case class for direction. Uh, and this is also a character, right? Yes, and now we need we need at least um, We need at least the direction of forward, which is a direction of F. Good. So now I have to import this here as well, direction, so that Scala will know the class. So now we have to create a private so this is um, the smooth function here this is this is private API okay so this should not be exposed um, to the rover external interface the only rover external interface is the execute commands function and possibly the state we uh, we can query move direction tuple int int Okay, but the direction, this is current coordinates, current coordinates, okay. And since this is a function, I want to return the new coordinates, okay. I want to return the new coordinates. So. What do we have to do in the move function here? Um, when we have to check for the direction. Okay, so when the direction is uh, forward, then I have to I have to increase. The y the the, the absolute y coordinates. Not now. I have to increase the y coordinates, and let me check. Okay, so what we do we create new coordinates. The current coordinates 
this represents the, the first part of the tuple and for the, the second part of the tuple we have to add one. Okay, so let's see if we already can, if this already passes. No, it doesn't pass yet because we expect, yes, yes. And the thing is that we don't actually change the state of the rover, okay? So what we have to do here So what we have to do here is change the state, change the coordinates of the rover. So the move function changes the coordinates, so it returns a new set of coordinates uh, depending on the direction. And then this is this is passed in uh, to our um, to our state of the rover. Let's see if it passes. It should pass now. Yes, it does. Okay. So, but we already see something which I don't don't like at all. Okay. So the the current the, the this tuple here. This is really hard to read, and it gets harder to read the more we add this stuff here. So what I want to like what I want to do actually is uh, to create another uh, type of class um, for a position. For a position where we can repre represent uh, the position with x and y, okay. So we, so that we uh, change, so that we change the variable name to position, and the type here should be position, which means. We have to convert the start coordinates, um, which we can, can also rename to start start position, maybe. But um, I have to do this conversion here, and this is the last time I deal with those with those tuple with this tuple stuff. Okay, so internally we only uh, deal with position. Okay, so which means we also current current position is the position. Okay, and what we return is also a position. Yep, which means we can say instead of this, we say x and we say y. And yep, right. So this also returns a position, which we maybe, which we maybe could. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So let me check if this still compiles. Yep, let me also rename this variable over there starting position although since this is still a tuple since this is still a tuple and not a position i mean yeah it is a position uh starting position but it's not a type position okay let's keep it coordinates that's fine okay um Right, so we have to continue implementing um, forward, backward, and stuff like that. So let me check what happens if we move two steps backward, uh, forward. Okay, then we should end up here, right? When we move two, two steps forward, we should end up at position three. Okay, so the tests fail because of my change to position. One second, okay. Right. 
right, right, right. Okay, so good. Let's run the test again. The good thing is about case classes is you can really uh, create. Uh, so this is not a Scala doesn't compare the instance, so it really compares um, uh, each field that represents this type. Okay. Good. So okay. So actually, okay. So we have added another move to forward. And the position is still okay. That's good. So what I now would like to do is to also move. I want to move backward. Okay. I want to move backward. No. Yes, okay, so let me, I first move forward and then I move backward and then I should be again at this position. So this will certainly fail because we have not implemented, uh, we don't, the rover doesn't understand, uh, the rover doesn't understand the B command yet. So what can we do? I think we can... Um, yeah, we could either copy, just copy this, put a B here, and call... and call... Um, and call move with a backward type. Okay, so that is probably something we could actually do. It will still not. It will still still not pass because we are not. Yes, we are not um, actually processing, uh, calculating a new position. So when we move backward, we have to create a new position with a, from the current position x. So this doesn't change. The current position y, y, we have to uh, subtract one from it. Let's run the test again. Okay, and it passes. But I want to make a change here because I want to have this all in one line. So. Um, case command if command no wait a second if command equals f or if or Command equals B and I think I don't need this over here. We can put the command variable here and then we can delete that. And then here I have to uh, create a new direction with the command. So, so this guard here, this if guard, it makes sure that we enter this, uh, we, we execute those uh, statements here only if the command is either F or B. And then we create a new direction of the command, um, which we have already created here, which will be either forward or backward. Okay, so, so this should still pass. Okay, good, it does. So we have now implemented forward and backward, but only in one direction. So this should work in all directions, okay? But we can't, uh, we can't turn right now, so we have to, 
Um, so we basically have to initialize the rover with a with a different heading. Should we do that? Or should we first implement the turning because then the, we could use the turning in in forward and backward. But if we do that, uh, we basically have a um, we have a dependency when we have a test. So this test would have a dependency on another test indirectly. So I don't know uh, if I want to have that. But what we could actually do is to reinitialize the rover. Okay. So so this is the heading north. Okay. So. Now we add a uh, heading east, or let's do south first because south because south is a little bit more similar to to north. So what we have to do is to reinitialize the rover, rover, or actually we have to create a new rover, right? Um, rover equals new rover with starting starting chords one one sorry um, yes one one and a heading of south and when we move forward we will end up at minus one. Okay, and the rover should have a heading of south. And okay, so we don't know south, so we have to add south here. So it compiles. So it compiles, so let me check. Let's run the tests. And it fails because the actual position is is one three. So what we have done is that we are not evaluating the the current heading yet in our forward and backward in our move operation here. We are not evaluating the current heading. So we have to check. So we have to look at the current heading. Um, okay. So what could we do? So we need the heading in here. We need to... The move depends on knowing what the head current heading is. Okay. Um, but I think um, so we could either no problem we could either put in the current heading here but actually I think I think we can use the state of the rover in this method so this doesn't necessarily need to be there is no there are still no side effects okay so we just read a state we, we don't write this we don't write change the state in this move in this move function here so I, I think we don't need this we don't need to um, to put in the current position we can we can read it from the state I think that's okay it's not a pure function I think but um, I think it's still okay but now we have to look at the heading now we have to look at the heading at the heading 
of whether we have to so if the heading equals uh, north direction so we have to import the heading if the road direction is north Uh, this is my new position. Else, actually, this will be, be my new position. Okay. So, can we write it somehow else? I want to put this, I want to do this like this. Yeah. Um, so, I think this should actually work. Yes, it works. Uh, okay, so let's continue implementing the backwards backwards case where we have where we move backwards um, with a heading of south where we should end up again at one one position one one. Okay, so this will not pass. It does not, yes, because we're moving further back, minus 3. So we have to do the same thing here, basically. We have to check the current heading, okay? If heading equals north, We subtract, else we have to add, okay. So let's check this. Okay, and it works. Now the problem is, uh, there's a lot of repetition here. So I'm wondering if we can carve out some Some things here. So this could be we could extract this method as um, we could extract this method as uh, inc increase y position increase y position. Yeah. Increase y position. Yes. Uh, where did it put it? Here. So when it's when it's a, a private a private method, we don't need to actually uh, explicitly uh, define the type here. So uh, the Scala compiler will figure it out, and and um, so that's fine. Uh, but we're still operating on the current position, so do I pass in the current position? No. Because, uh, yeah, so either we either we pass it in right from the beginning here, when it gets into the move, move function, uh, the move method, uh, if we don't pass it in in the move method, we don't need to. So this doesn't need to be a pure function either. Okay. This, those functions basically, they don't change state, but they read state and create something new. So I think that's fine. So then the other one here is. Uh, decrement y position but I want parentheses to indicate that this is a function or a method okay and also I actually want to move 
the execute function over here because this is the only external public interface function and uh, the other ones are lower lower level and I want to have them below okay anyway so actually uh, we can then change this like this because it's now more concise which is good and we can put it in one line so that we can read it better and we have to implement now more headings for the move so the next uh, heading let's take I don't know east so we have to reinitialize the rover or create a new rover with a new heading now while I say I have to reinitialize the rover I realize that an initialize method might still be better because actually I don't find it very good to have to create a new rover okay to just change the heading or to 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 reinitialize to change the state of the rover by creating a new rover so I don't know if I if I like that so maybe I will change that uh, east so we don't know east uh, one second we don't know east so let's create east east okay um, then when we are have a heading of east and heading east and I move forward twice I will increase the x coordinate whoops the x coordinate okay so let's check this yes yes we have what have we done instead we have instead increased what? Expected state is this, but actual position or expected position is this and actual position is this. Can you read it? I'm not sure I understand this. Ah, okay, I know, okay. Right, right, right. Ah, okay. So I think we have to turn this, I think we have to turn turn this move thing here around. Because we have only two head, we have only two headings, north and, no, sorry. We have only two, uh, two directions, forward and backward, but we have four headings, okay? So, um, so I would have to differentiate here a lot more um, for the heading. So I think we have to turn this around and uh, create a match for the heading first, okay? So if the heading is north, north and then we check the direction no wait a second the heading when the heading is north yeah when the heading is north and the direction is forward then I have to increase the Y position. Otherwise, I have to decrease the Y position. Okay. So, yep, I think that's fine. Now, if I have, uh, yeah, I think, I think, um, yeah, we have another case for south, but let me just check that. Let me comment this out and let me first verify that this change 
still works. So when the direction south when the direction is forward we have to uh, decrease the y position and increase uh, on backward so let me run the tests yes okay good so we can put this back in run the test and we don't know east yet so it'll do something else yeah so it doesn't know east yet so we have a match error because we match here for uh, a, a heading, which the match it doesn't know. So if we have a direction of forward, then I want to increase the x position, okay? And else, I want to decrease the x position, okay? So we have to now create a new method here for ink x position. And we return a new position where the position x is incremented and the position y stays as is okay so and then we have uh, sorry minus one and we call this decrement x position yeah i think this should work okay so okay so um now we have to move the rover backward while being in the east heading while being in the east heading and we should end up back at one position one one okay so I think I'll I'll continue implementing oops I'll continue in implementing uh, for west but after that I'd like to refactor and add an initialize method to the rover because I think I'd like that better. Heading west. When we move west, we are at minus one and we have a heading of west. Okay, so we don't know west yet. We have to add west. When we are heading west and we move forward, we decrement the x position and otherwise we increment the x position, okay? Yep, good. So now we have to move backwards with a position of west and then we end up at one position one one. Okay, let me see if it, let me see if it actually, yes, okay, so we have everything working so far, so we have actually, we finished implementing the move operation and we can set that to forward backward okay so next thing we move we work on the left right but um, I actually want to change I want to um, I don't want to create a new rover um, I think it should be possible to reinitialize the rover I mean, we could we could uh, we could access 
we could access those those sta the state and in fact that um, but I only want to read the state I don't want to write the state from the outside okay so that's that's why I think I think it should it would actually be good if there would be indeed uh, only getters to this but we can make a trick here or not a trick um, we create we create a, a function a position a heading so we create getters and rename those make those private private and rename those to underscore yes and then um, and then we cannot write those from we cannot write to those from the outside we can only read through from those we can read the state from the outside through those uh, methods internally we can change the state okay so but still then I want a initialize method initialize in it and the initialize is exactly that okay and um, And the initialize is exactly that. The only thing we have to take care about is that we. The only thing we have to care about is to make sure that this initialize. Yeah. So what we can do is um, we set the default position. Okay, which uh, heading is north. So the default position and the default heading uh, is used in case no one calls uh, the init the init function. But we can change the state or reinitialize the rover without creating a new rover. Okay, so I think I like this. I like this better. But we have to change our tests here. Rover ro 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 dot init. So this is now our, our initialization, our default initialization. And here, we instead of creating a new rover, we say init. Okay, and with that, uh, what's the problem here? Yeah. Need a new, uh, need another parenthesis. So and and with that, yeah, with that, I don't need to create a new rover each time. And it should still all pass. Okay, let's check. Yeah, good. Okay, so that's that. Um, We continue with implementing left right. I think this should not be such a big task. Um, how did we call the turn? Move forward, backward, and um, the rover should turn left, right. And with it, change the heading. We can say change turn left right to change the heading. Okay, so we already have a rover here. It is initialized to position one one and a heading of north. Um, so what we can do now is rover execute commands. 
array and I want now to turn it left and then we want to assert that uh, that the rover is heading equals when I turn it left it should be west okay so when I turn it left it should be west let's run the test yes and it fails because a match error because our execute commands function doesn't know a left command yet and um, yeah and I also don't want to make the rover bail out like this okay so a match error is a pretty significant error so I want to add a default case here where which just does nothing okay so when a command is sent which we don't understand uh, we don't do anything we don't change state we don't do anything um, but we also don't um, crash okay so yeah that's good and possibly I should do the same here as well we don't have a different heading but just in case I don't want to oh, hold it I need to I need to um, to return something and what we return is we don't know when none of the cases here if we don't uh, if nothing none of the cases here work uh, our heading is in an undefined state okay um, our heading is in an undefined state and we just return the same the the, the position the position we are in as a new but but we create a new object we don't return the same as which we have in the state and all tests should still pass ah uh, no so sorry we were still trying to implement this okay so we are supposed to turn the rover left right so we have a case where the command can be L, which means we have to turn the rover into a direction. Okay. the def turn we have a turn direction so but it's still a direction right and we and uh, what we return is a new heading so when we turn it over um, um, we change the heading now this should be relatively simple I think that when okay direction so we we have a case for direction direction match no wait a second um we also have to match over the heading the current heading right heading match case north and then we have to check if the direction direction equals left then I have a heading of west so we don't know left Use a, we could use a different type here. We could use a different type for. Wait a second. If direction equals left, do we have? 
to have an else case, I think so, east. So there can be only left or right. Yes. Let's see if this test passes. No. Yes, because we don't write, don't change the state yet. So we have to change the current heading with the result of the turn function. Okay. Okay, so we have turned the rover left. Now when we further uh, when we further turn the rover left, we should be in south heading, right? Let's check that. So there's a match error because the turn function doesn't know the state west, which is, necess which is necessary because otherwise Otherwise, uh, it can't turn further. So um, when we are facing west and uh, we, took, should, we should turn left, then we are at south, okay? Else, we are at north. Let's run the test. Okay, it passes. So let's make a full turn. Let's make a full turn. South, east. Okay, so we have another case. Case south. If direction equals left. When we're facing south and we turn left, we're facing east after that, or else west okay okay so let's turn further then we should be facing north again okay yes so we have another case for when the heading is east yeah Direction equals um, left. We're facing east, north, else um, south. So with this implemented, we could also try turning the rover to the right. So we're facing north and when we turn right we will want to end up at east. And I think this should already pass. No, it does not. Oh no. Okay, yes, 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 because we are not accepting the command as R. Yes. Okay, it works. So let me do the same here. And we should end up again at north. Good. So and now we make uh, some mixed cases where we say left, right, right, left, right, right, which right, right, which should end up at east. Just some additional test cases, but they should all be okay. Um, Right, right, right should end up in 
west. Okay. No. Why not? Heading north did not equal. Okay, one second. Right. So we are at still at east from the last test here. So I should actually initialize the rover after uh, before each of those of those individual things here. Rover in it. One one north. Okay, because otherwise. Otherwise, we could get in trouble. Those could also be individual separate tests, but yeah, why not put them into a test for turn left right? Okay, good. So I think we're done with turn. Turn left right. Now we have to implement the wrapping of the edges. Uh, so which means we have to grid so we have to introduce a grid um, how do we do that so I could I could think since we have a lot of case classes here already that we have a case class for grid 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 which has a width and a height a width and a height and the rover can remember the rover knows the grid okay And our default grid is 1010, but we can override this. Uh, we can override this by start grid, grid, and to be not in intrusive, um, I can we can set a default grid here as well, so that we don't have to change a lot of tests. Okay, so grid is like equals start grid, and this I like don't like it when I can't read the stuff. So let's do this. Well, it goes over over the you know um, to the right side, and it's beyond the the the, uh, the border. I don't like it. Uh, start grid. Okay, but I want a new instance of the start grid, so we copy it. Okay. Ah, and also, I would want to do this equally here. Yes, so that we don't need to use this copy. We use grid uh, start grid dot one start grid dot two so internally we use the grid type but the initialize will use a tuple I think that's okay okay so we have we can initialize the rover with a grid now let's look at our move tests let's look at our move tests so we when we move when we are heading, when we are heading south, we have a, a position of minus one. So this this probably shouldn't be a minus one. Um, so when we move to the south and we are at the edge, the south or edge, okay, uh, we should end up at 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 the top again because we basically have moved around the sphere. And um, at that point, yes. Okay, so 
Um, so what is the lowest position? The lowest position could be zero or is it one? It's a good question. Um, maybe it's easier to, to take the grid size. So we start at one. Um, so the first position can be one and the last position can be 10. And if it's larger than 10, we start again at one. And if it's smaller than one, we start again, we, we start again at 10. Okay. So which means that when we start at one and we go forward two steps, we are at 10, nine. So we have to have a nine here when the grid is, has a size of 10, 10. Okay. And the same here. the same here but let me run the test first let me run this test first and see how we can fix that so right um, so which case is this this is uh, actually we can what can we do so we can we can put this into the increment x position in, uh, into those methods where we just say where we, where we make a post process or not or do we i would tend to say that i keep those as is because then it's easier to reason okay so they just increment the stuff and that's it and we have a post process here in move where we say where we make where we check if um, check the, the position and if we have exceeded our boundaries we have to change the x or and y core positions okay so um fix Fix position. Okay, so which basically means we return a position here. Let's call this new position. New position. We put this new position into this fixed positions function, and this fixed positions will return a new position, uh, a fixed position basically, where it checks um, those corner cases. Okay, so private def fix position and it returns a new position. And here we have to check all those cases. And in the test, I have only fixed one, okay? The other one is still in place. So when I, when I, after I implement this, this, this one here should pass and this one here should fail. Okay. So let's have a look. If position dot X uh, we can only move one step so which means we can be greater than uh, grid dot x we can be greater than grid width in which case uh, in which case we create um, in which create we create a new position position where we change the x coordinate position no sorry we start at uh, 
it's greater than 10 so I have to start at 1 okay and the x uh, the y position stays the same if position x is smaller than 0 I want to return a new position where the x is the where the x is the grid size the grid width and the y position stays the same okay so if position y Actually, what we do here is pretty much the same, only for the y coordinate. If y, if y, but we don't have the width here, but the height, and here also the height, and in no, wait a second, wait a wait a wait a second, a oh, wait a second, wait a second. Uh, the position x stays the same, right? Position x stays the same. What would change is when if it's smaller than zero, then I have to take the grid height. If it's larger than 10 or larger as the grid size, grid height, I have to use uh, Um, actually, I can. Yeah. Okay. So, so those are for those four cases, and if none of those uh, apply, we just create a copy of the current position. Um, but. This copy reminds me because we can't just say position copy and we just change x equals 1 and the rest stays as is. And also here we say position copy uh, x equals grid width and the rest stays as is. Okay, return um, position, well it's not, it's not a lot, it's not a lot, uh, it's actually not a lot uh, shorter, so, well, but anyway, copy y equals grid height. So, yeah, let's see. Okay. Okay, so it fails here. It fails here where it says that um, where it says that it's 10. Uh, it's actually 10, but it should be 9. How can that be? South, because we check for... It gets... It's already... When we started position 1-1. One, one. And um, we go two steps to the south. We are at 1-10. And then at one, yeah, actually at one zero, and then at one minus one. But uh, so, which means we have not, 
we have to do this, right? Equals uh, zero. Yes, and now it fails at the other case. So now it fails here now. And this should work now. Okay. So I think that's fine. Um, so we checked that at the west boundary and at the south boundary. We could uh, add additional tests to check this to check this at the north and east boundary. Okay, so let's do this. Rover dot in it um, um, let's check it at the north boundary which means we have a position of one and nine facing north and then I want the rover to move I want the rover to move forward twice. Uh, assert. Hmm. Assert rover position equals position one. One. Yes, let's do the same for, this is the north boundary, and this is the east boundary. Okay, so uh, for the east boundary we have to set this, and we have to make it face east, and then the position one one yes okay so I think that's okay so we can close this this wrapping and we have to implement the last thing the obstacles so <clears throat> obstacles so on our way there could be obstacles so the, the first thing is the rover um, yeah the rover somehow needs to know where those obstacles are yeah so well the, the thing is if it knows where those obstacles are it could it could uh, it could uh, report it right away in the beginning before before executing any commands okay um, but um, so it basically we we implement we implement that before each move we check if the next if the if, if the if the new position where we would go is not an obstacle okay and but for that the rover basically has to know where the obstacles are right and um, so this is also uh, some knowledge of the rover obstacles, right? Which is basically a list of positions. Okay. Well, no, not this. Uh, a list of position, which is as a default nil. All right. And um, the initialize method um we can set the obstacles list position no list yeah we we stay with this paradigma and and only use tuples in the initialize function but then in order to See the obstacles. Uh, wait a moment. Yeah, obstacles equals uh, obstacles dot map, and we have to map them because uh, all uh, into positions, right? 
position o dot one o dot two. Okay, because we are not let's call this p. Let's rename it p. Okay. Okay, so let's create a test before we move any further. So the rover should uh, detect and report obstacles. Ops, ops, op, obstacles in. Yeah. So we have a rover, and we initialize the rover. We initialize the rover with uh, with a starting position and a heading, and um, the grid. I keep the grid as is, but obstacles I want to override as a list of. Let's only have one obstacle here. One at one three. Okay, so at position one three, we have an obstacle. And now I want to. How does the rover? Um, how does the rover report those this obstacle? We could change the execute commands function and return. And return something, something optional, maybe an optional position, where the obstacle is. Okay, so yeah, I think that's something we should do. So, let's do this assert that the rover when we execute commands and we execute forward forward which would get us into this position where the obstacle is right when we execute this then i want to have an optional an optional coordinate where this obstacle is. Okay. Now the question is, do we use the position? Because to the outside world, we don't use types, right? So I'm inclined to say that I only I want tuples here as well. Okay. So the tuple reports the tuple reports any obstacle okay which means that in in the default case we return none Okay, so let's uh, replace this with contains. Fine with me. So let's run this test. And it certainly fails because it reports nothing. We have no obstacle detection yet. So where, where do we put the obstacle detection? Since we are in Scala, we could, we could, I think this is, this is a functionality of the move. This is part of the move. Okay. So the move, the move creates the new position. So this after this fixed position this fixed position returns um, the position where we want to move to and in the executes comma execute commands we pass this new position we change the state uh, and set the new position depending on what move has calculated right 
So what we could do is to use to use we have to I think this is kind of an exception, right? So the the when <coughs> move detects that the next uh, uh, the next position there's an obstacle, then this is a this is an exceptional case. Okay, so we can use exceptions here. In that we let's make this a var var. New position, <clears throat> and here we can say um, yeah, I, I'm not, I think, um, I'm not sure whether we should Let's put it into move right now. Yeah. There are different options, so we could. So we could also do something here, where we check. Um, Where we have um, where we make some you know uh, move check obstacle right this will then This check obstacle will then so function composition here basically okay so we do some functional composition we have where we have a <coughs> private def check obstacle or or obstacle detect let's call it check obstacle and it takes a position and it returns a position because we uh, because we still have to um, have to pass the the position the new position onto the state but it will throw okay throws exception in case we have uh, we have detected an obstacle okay <clears throat> then we can keep this as var, uh, val. That's fine. Uh, I don't want to put it into the move because, uh, yeah, single responsibility and also for methods. So this is not particularly a single responsibility where we have different actors and stuff like that, like in the solid principles. But the move should only do uh, a move, although. The, the the name is a little, little bit misleading because um, it doesn't actually move right so it calculates a new position and maybe we should re we should uh, change the name of the, of those methods which I yeah I, I do shortly or I will do that uh, and this here we should also um, um, what did I say check obstacle uh, um, detect obstacle okay so so what do we do so we have obstacles we have um, the prover knows the obstacles and basically I have to uh, if um, obstacles obstacles dot find uh, the obstacle position this is an obstacle find obstacle when the obstacle has the same 
x and y position as our next position, which is this one here, then I want to throw an exception, okay? So, um, obstacle dot x equals position dot x and obstacle dot y equals position dot y. So if this is the same, if is defined, we could actually say exists or yeah, when it exists, then throw new exception but we don't know um, yeah we basically have to create we have basically have to create a new exception right we have to create an exception where we can store the 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 the, the, the new position okay so um, class uh, obstacle exception which takes a position and it extends from runtime exception okay so this throws an obstacle exception new obstacle exception and the position of the obstacle is this position okay and if it doesn't throw we just return the position yes 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 so and so and um, which means we have to wrap all this have to wrap all this into a try catch block and when we detect a obstacle exception then I want to return I want to return Turn OA. Okay, so we have to make this where is we have to make this a val so that I can access it. Position map um map uh. wait a second I have to wrap this so we return the obstacle as in it wrapped as a as a um, as a tuple, okay. O A dot position dot x. O A dot position dot y. <coughs> and in case it's some other exception, just return not because we don't know. So let's see if this makes the tests pass. So we have, so this, yeah, okay, cool. So we have to, we had, um, we have to, we had to implement a few things here to make this test actually pass. And and so from red to green was relatively long. Okay, so but yeah, that's necessary sometimes. Okay, so when you have a lot of code and uh, the faces maybe will lengthen a little bit. But um, I think this is okay. 
So what we have seen here is, so what we have done, we've moved, we, we, we tested from, from the external interface of the rover, uh, only using the execute commands, except the initialization, okay? Um, but we have seen that the initialization is, um, is important to set different states of the rover, but we have only, uh, but, but the assertions only were for, for when the rover has executed commands. So the execute commands is the only external interface. And um, we probably could do more things here, like for example, some of the move and turn operations, they could be, so we could find diff, more collaborators or more, let's say, um, yeah, more, we could carve out certain pieces of functionality and put them into a separate classes. For example, the move and the turning and, and stuff like that. Or, but I think for this little example, this is uh, pretty okay. All right, okay, so I think that's it. Um, I don't have anything left. We wanted to uh, rename the move and turn. Um, yeah, I think we should do that. So what? Yeah, I think we should do that. Um, So what could be the name of the move function? Let's call it um, um, move. Well, why actually not move? I think I will still keep it. Okay, I think that's fine. I think that's okay. Anyway. I think uh, this was long enough now. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, see you next time. Okay, goodbye.